actually done pretty well. They started losing when they were getting picked off in individual lanes. So Infernal, nope, looks like Soa chooses the map, and we are going to Sky Temple, the opposite of what I think might have worked for Sunny Lion. And you know what? I'm absolutely sharing your point of view. I think for Sunny Lion, they should have probably gone for the Battleground choice instead of going for first pick, yeah. and then they could have gone for a map like B uh, BOE. Battlefield of Eternity, where you don't have to worry about objectives all the time, where you just need to focus on raw team fighting and skirmishing, and that's maybe a little more up their alley. Um, but as it is, Sky Temple, such a good map for Soa. They played almost every single series when they uh, get the chance to. And we have the Sky Temple coming in to play, as we've said, Global's important. So the Falstad could also make a return here. We've actually been seeing a little bit of Dahaka in the mm. Open Division, so that was quite interesting to see. And Sunny Lion, Medivh, pretty reasonable in terms of the objective fights and gaining vision. And on this map, vision can be such a huge deal. Mm -hmm. Would not even, would not at all hate to see that back. Yeah, I mean, it's just a safe bet, right? If you take away the Medivh from the enemy team, especially if you're not planning on picking it yourself, which you could as a first pick, then... Uh, you know, just, just ban it in, on Sky Temple. It's definitely a more solid pick. Uh, you have uh, a, a wide open battlefield with many uh, angles for a portal to be dropped from. Then, of course, you have the boss area with Leyland Seal. You have a strong boss battling tool. So uh, the Medivh, they just don't want to risk it. They just want to play a little bit more standard because Medivh right now is shaking things up in almost every major region. He defies the rules, right? He brings his own dynamics into the game. So um, oftentimes strategies that worked before can't be applied because of Medivh. We saw that in game number one with the gusts not being as efficient as they normally would have been. So now with Medivh removed and Garrosh also removed, a lot of those actual punishing heroes have been taken out immediately. But we're starting off still fairly normally. In comes the Hanzo. In comes the Hanzo. And that is basically... Could potentially be a hero for first if he plays the ranged assassin again like he did in game one where he was the tychus did fairly well in it he had a couple of flashy moves like the odin transformation blocking apocalypse stuns not too shabby etc once again coming in for sunny line enjoying the hero it was a potential turnaround right now it is jada currently hovering over it as well assuming that that is the skin that only he uses uh, so potentially looking to keep Jada on main tank now. Oh, I see what you're trying to get at, right? Yesterday, you guys had a really interesting and enlightening moment with yeah. skin varieties and telling which player is going to play it. Gotta get your skin on point. Otherwise, mm. whoever initially locks in the hero can be a potential giveaway. You gotta keep your eye out for that. It's Genji and Junkrat being hovered over. Junkrat was a big issue for them last time, especially with the Stukov. So, looks like that is being the uh, more the, the more considered hover at the moment. Diablo, also a potential option. All right. Junkrat. They're basically trying to take away the favorite toys of Soa. And uh, players like Fei Yi and uh, T.Y., they're going to be like, I wanted to play that Junkrat, though. Come on, Sunny Lion, don't do this to me. Jaina, though. Jaina ah, comes wrong side. in. On the wrong side, so we have t so now we have Jaina versus Jaina, but Jaina is potentially ETC, so we could have the Ring of Frost into the mosh pit onto the Jaina to try and stop the mosh pit to interrupt it to kill it before the mosh pit gets too much damage from Jaina. Hmm. Right now there Enjoy isn't that. really a whole lot of interrupts available, with the exception of maybe the Twilight yeah. Dream for Malfin. So maybe <laughs> judgment. You know, I think Judgment has a point and, um, or has its place. And especially yeah. in those wonkier games that we often used to seeing in China, we could see the Judgment uh, coming into a fresh more. Now, we do not know the rule updates in China, do we? Is, uh, no, we had a Zeratul pick who did do Void Prism yesterday. So I don't think okay. they have updated to the rule. Uh, or they might not even be aware because I don't think they probably watch European Open Division. <laughs> hey! Um, <laughs> you can't as we just that. See the... <laughs> as we see, because uh, currently in European Open Division, Void Prism is currently mm -hmm. banned to a very rare interaction. So there is a, ch there is a very good chance we're going to go this entire game without any chance of it happening. Yeah, it requires a certain... 
uh, chain of events involving Blaze and involving Desert. I don't even know if it involves the bunker, apparently. If, it might just oh, be stasis. It, but it might way. just be the, the VP alone. Okay. So yeah, we don't know. That's even we less do not know. We, ha we do not have the information. As we oh, wait to see right, uh, what is the next thing. We need a solo laner potentially, but Tyrael and Greymane can Sometimes fill that. So there's going to be a main tank instead, Johanna. Mm. Okay, Johanna adds, of course, a little bit more potential interrupting. Uh, against the ETC Marsh Pit with uh, Condemn, the Blessed Shield. So far, so good. Johanna, of course, also brings a little bit of uh, inbuilt synergy uh, for the Jaina. You uh, group people together by condemning them, and then Jaina is going to drop a Blizzard, maybe even a Ring of Frost on top, although in China, the Ring of Frost meta has kind of almost uh, shattered, and uh, we have yeah. instead... The water elemental, which is oftentimes a lot more reliable. But boy, yesterday, Tetra, it was Ring of Frost time with uh, worst positioning, just winning game number two single-handedly because of that ability. We might see in this one, honestly. Look at the heroes. There's a couple like mm -hmm. very high mobile ones, like Tychus and uh, Hanzo, but both of them require to be standing still to get their maximum damage. ETC needs to be standing still to get a good mosh pit. Uh, what uh, has that channel time, which means you're guaranteed going to hit him. Uh, assuming the rest of the team groups up to try and get kills on the mosh bit, you can potentially get something good there. Then it's a question of just where is Stukov? Stukov also is going to be standing still if he's using his lurking arm. Alright, game number two is about to commence here. Currently selling line down 0-1 and they're represented by Pau on that Stukov. Jaina plays ETC again. Feet B on Hanzu. Wildlight on the Zero tool and first on the Tyke as well. Could first now become China's SDE, who only plays uh, Tychus over and over again, 13 games in a row. Sorry, right, I can't see your introduction So there. we have Faye Imperial, Uncle Gio Mafurin, TY on Jada, Klong on Johanna, and Sorry on Greymane. Ah, oh, Tetra, you, you still did it. You're an absolute master caster. Master caster. Why don't we have that term more? Um, yeah, it's just such a good caster. rhyme, especially if you say it with the American accent, because if it's in British, you are the master caster, and it sounds less impressive. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it sounds way more sophisticated, though. <laughs> yes. Uh, Could you please I mean, recommend me a good master caster, sir? Yes, we, we, are having a tor we are having a tournament here at the local arena, and we require a master caster to bring you the entertainment in the best possible manner. Uh, there we go. Sorry, mana. Uh, <laughs> Immediate pressure from Soa onto the top lane with three members. Johanna looking to interrupt any rotations will spot Feed B thanks to this watchtower. And that allows Sorry and Uncle G to back it up. All right. So a little bit of uh, rotation action going down for a sunny lane, but they're completely ignoring the bottom lane. That is never worth it. Why do you not have anyone to soak there? There's going to be an entire minion wave oh, just shoot. going down the pipes. And uh, already you can see how the experience is shaping up a little more differently. Then in game number one. Finally, Hanzo arrives and he's actually going to get this full minion wave. So I believe he only lost one minion wave total. So overall, not the w still pretty bad as he's a whole minion wave. But yeah. arriving just in time for the second and the entire second one as well. And Hanzo went for a scatter error build here up to this point. So he should have an easier time at level four to take down Mercenary camp all by himself with uh, the additional PvE damage that comes with it. For now, though, the night camp being taken first by Soa and then by the Sunny Line. So, which team is going to put more focus, more attention into the top lane? We're going to find out very shortly. Jaina, by the way, going for the lingering chill, I think it is, uh, which causes the slows to persist a little longer. As Jaina being focused down by Jada Rico. Not David, sorry, not by Tainer and Cove in this case, <laughs> by Tyrell trying to get the slows in. But Tyrell, not with any uh, extra slow talents yet for now. And that's such a see, able to survive this pretty easily. Yeah, and you can even see how the emphasis that Soa put in the top lane, four versus three here in terms of hero numbers, really is paying off up to this point. The mercenary camp is largely untouched. Most importantly, the uh, wizard minion providing the anti-magic fall right here, reducing the damage dealt. And Tyrell, of course, with the justice for all, providing powerful shields to allied heroes and minions and mercenaries alike. So this push, look at that. So much value from Rope 1W is giving them two towers and a gate. And a down. And Johanna has been pushing very far forward, using the fact that she is so tanky to interrupt every silence the stuck off faces yeah. down to prevent any yeah. defense here. So much so, the POW is dropped. Not dropped. Good escape by POW. Good zoning by the rest of the team. 
And Faye, now in serious danger, but Wylight not able to deal the damage. Okay, Jaina with the power slay once again, trying to lock down Johanna. Sorry, is furious and clawing his way onto multiple opponents. But already, Tetcher, the positioning by Soa once again is so good that they were able to uh, take a couple of shots in the middle and they secure the top as well. And with the previous onslaught, the previous push, that top fort is going to fall very shortly. Yep, top four, 100% going to go down. In fact, it is already dead as we see the mid fort starting to take some shots as well. Jaina, very interesting build here. Goes for Arcane Intellect, but still goes for a Frostbolt talent on level 7. Hmm. So still going for the cooldown reduction, uh, which results, of course, in uh, kind of getting more value from the Lingering Chill of the 1 as well, because the more frequent you can use your abilities, the more uh, you're going to have the slows, the longer lasting slows applied onto the enemy teams for now, though. Hanzo dashing over the uh, wall here. Actually, that would be a very daring leap because if you fall down there, I'm not sure if Hanzo would come back. I am concerned about the uh, the fencing height of that particular area. Mm -hmm. It is very much against health and safety. Very easy to trip down there. It'd be at least waist height. <laughs> it needs to be at least always tight. There we go. All right, level seven has piece. arrived for the Sunny Lions. Full scattering error build now having cooldown reduction as well after every basic attack for Hanzo. We see the Pinball Wizard, which causes extra damage after uh, using the uh, W on uh, stun targets from the power slide. Not enough to get the kill on Faye, though, even with the overkill from Tychus coming in. Trying to track him down, but... Even with such a supple wrist, the Pinball Wizard not able to pick up the kill this time. Long in trouble. Does he have an Iron Skin? Yes, he has. He even went for Hold Your Ground at level 1, which means he's going to have a lower cooldown on the Iron Skin to begin with. And the absorbed damage from the shield is going to be much higher, which nets in more uh, unstoppable state. In a longer unstoppable state, I should say. So much poke coming in right now from this Jaina to slow down assaults when uh, ETC comes in as Jaina pulls back. Once again, ETC Jaina has been very impressive. I will be excited to see if this is a permanent change to main tank or mm -hmm. if we're going to see uh, if we're ever going to see a different tank instead of ETC. Okay, he actually goes to safety there as well using W first, knock them back. And then with the power slide to safety, he completes a great escape maneuver. Now the lingering uh, arm here, the silence, taking care of the missing spreading, uh, spreading infection, I think it's called. I can't remember the name of the level one talent. Um, spreading infestation and the within my reach, able to just be such an impressive zoning tool for Stokov here and using them to also deal a little bit of damage to help clear out the mercenaries. Now, level 10 will be here shortly, and I'm really curious to see whether Dana is going to go for the Water Elemental or the Ring of Frost. No, they go for the safe route with the Water Elemental, preferring the uh, single target peeling that it can do or the chasing potential against someone like Zeratul or Stukov uh, more and higher than the potential wombo combo with, uh, you know, Blessed Shield, Ring of Frost, Twilight Dream. But already, the Twilight Dream, I'm really happy to see. It's a great and fairly reliable tool to stop any mosh pits. But uh, first, I like, even need to get there on the level 10. Yeah, they do. Jaina getting targeted down on that ETC. Power slides out, but immediate go for the throat. Sorry, picks up the kill. Tranquility, not getting too much of a counter. ETC. Interestingly, actually, picks up the mosh pit here. Hmm. I would have actually expected a stage dive to join Me his too. team. Exactly. This fight interrupt if they could I, defend it. I, I'm totally down with you. I was going to say the exact same thing. I totally expected him to pick stage dive to arrive at his team side again at this boss fight. For now, though, Zeratul, he's revealed. Oh, he's keeping. Oh, oh, I mean, he's too. Ah, that's a huge VP. They're holding the point to even Tyrion's and if they can just kill off. Yes, they can. Twilight Dream, they stole the boss, even killing off ah. Tyrion here. And. Four versus five, Sunny Lion just schooled Soa. Wow, that was uh, quite unexpected. I never thought that uh, Zerkul would actually get this much value with one VP off because he was revealed the entire time. But look at TY and Uncle G, they're still clumping up. Why would you do that when you already knew what the Zerkul was coming uh, from? At? And look at the Twilight Dream, it was actually used and completely whiffed there as well after the VP expired. So utter disaster yeah. for Team Soa. So many mistakes in one engagement and they rightfully lose the boss as a result.
They ran everyone into the Void yeah. Prism except Johanna, just thinking, oh, it's fine, she can defend, and then we'll all be healthy when we come in the Void Prism. No one will have taken extra damage or be annoyed from the silence. This will be easy. Turns out, yes, Johanna is very good at tanking until she gets hit by every single scatter arrow in a team fight, and therefore she gets absolutely destroyed. And with this Sunny Lion able to take the team fight. All right, this is a very unfortunate turn of events here for Team Soa. Just like in game number one, they had a really sweet early game lead, but now all of a sudden it's starting to crumble more and more. And can some line stabilize? Can they get a win here? It would be so much desired, so much needed for them in order to get some points to move away from the bottom tiers of the table. And that VP already, it never should have gotten that much value, but still, it was a nice flanking maneuver by Wildlight, and it definitely must feel good for him, in particular, to get those plays off, because he's always been, in my opinion, the ah, the weakest link in the team up to this point. But his Zerg will definitely on point up to this point. Uh, oh, that was all the points. I'm not going to say up to this point, up to this moment in time. I would agree with you on this. I have been concerned about him in the past, but that was a solid play. He was okay. in a bit of trouble. Speaking of a bit of trouble, down goes Fei. He is uh, going to have to be godlike play scout here. Tries to, throws the Elder his Mike, can't get the shield off though, and gets taken out. You know, why not? Why just not use Marsh Pit on a single Tyrael when you realize you can get the kill with Violet and Zeratul close behind and Tyrael already being a little weak here. Here comes the Dragon's Arrow landing on once again two members in the back line. The zoning mosh, uh, the zoning BP is real. The silence underneath as well, but this time they can't lock down in any more tanks. So up in full retreat here with Tyrael still down. They need to be careful. And once again, for the second game in a row, Sunny Lion beginning to extend themselves out of lead. But from the first game, we know that doesn't really mean much when you're up against Soa. Yeah, they can always strike back at you from uh, the unexpected angle. And they're doing exactly that. They're trying to go for a boss, uh, for a bottom keep maneuver because they uh -oh. realize. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that was a really nice dismount by Wildlight without exposing himself too too much. But they realize we're never going to make it in time to contest the top temple. So what do we do instead? We're just going to try to take down those towers ourselves, so the temple in the bottom will get more value. Currently, uh, Turiel is currently holding it. So uh, can they mount up? Can they run away? No, nope, a couple of cheeky dismounts though from that scattering arrow, but. I think so it should be fine for now. Yes, yeah, it's tier two shots for both teams coming in. Single level lead for Sunny Lion and Soa. Very patiently will take their shots. And wait their turn, basically. They're gonna move up, probably go out, try and grab their own bruiser camp a little bit later than Sunny Lion grabbed theirs. But that's good. It will defend the already weakened top plane thanks to those uh, objective shots. Ooh, the bottom keep dangerously low in health, but so is the top keep. So the side lanes here on the opposite sides of the map could be uh, quite exposed and quite endangered now. 16, of course, is a little low, is a little closer for the side lanes because they were able to get more kills under their belt. They were able to tie the score in destruction as well. Yeah, it's a very close game up to this point. Icy veins coming in for Jaina now on the right hand side. XP very much in favor of Sunny Lion, as you said, but as structures, the bottom keep is far worse off in terms of health than the top one. So, so a little bit ahead in that. They also just use their own Bruiser Camp to defend the Bruiser Camp of Sunny Lion, and now they can pressure with it. This is the plan. As long as they don't lose too much in this bot lane from the double C Giants, this could be a really good move by Soa. Wait, are they doing it again? Are they using the uh, night camp here and uh, the minions to rush down I and think race they top lane? Bait. Yeah, I think they were just trying to bait so that they can defend yeah. the Sea Giant camp without having to actually have the enemy team there. And so far it appears to have worked. They're at all stopping a couple ports, but most of the other heroes, Tyrrell's already started on these, even delaying the Mercenaries getting to the base with some nice stutter step there to force them to attack so that they freeze in place for a second and then steps backwards to make sure he takes no damage. Yeah, this is a really cute move by Soa to just buy a little bit more time until they turn 16 themselves. And that is definitely a, a, a really good move they've done several times now, right? Just pose a little bit of a threat here on one of those side lanes and forcing the enemy team back to rotate and deal with you. Um, and then you just retreat, you play cat and mouse, and then you buy enough time to get the 16 talent on the way, which we see right now. The numbing blast coming in for uh, Jaina, of course, causing the roots on the Cone of Cold, on the Frozen target. The Moonlit Harmony on Malfrian providing a little bit more burst healing compared to the 
uh, other Moonfire Tunnel in 16, which gives you a little bit more consistent healing. Spey scouts the point, finds Jaina. Ooh, nice he will block. block him in here. Looks like they want to try and make a play. Johanna being a great They're distraction. Awesome. They focus Jaina. They need to be careful not to group up. Dragon Arrow lands down here. Once again, look how grouped up they are. Void Prism does not land. Only hits the Water Elemental here. But they're still going to take the longer way around so that they don't get caught away from the rest of their team. As EPC looks for the opportunity, Jaina finds nothing. And even gets rooted by TY on Jaina. All right, Wildlight going back in. This time, unfortunately, his VP was not as good as the previous ones. Only catching the Water Ellie. And uh, now they did enough damage, they did enough zoning though to force Soa back for now. And they are trying to get the middle temple as is. Now the middle temple, of course, is going to shoot at the middle lane. And uh, I think if I recall correctly, that one should look very healthy still for Sunny Line. The bottom one, of course, is the one that's currently threatened. Pressure being put onto this top temple, or mid temple in this case. Trying to look for the opportunity to get those extra shots. They know if they get bot, it is the keep. They know if they get top as well, then it's going to be potentially two keeps. And this is the objective for Soa. Distract, force a fight away from the objective that they can use to win the game. Because then they can, if the objective they use to win the game is fought over, there's a chance they will die and lose the opportunity to take it later. Yeah, cool move by Feed B here, by the way, in the Hanzo. He used his superior range and the strong burst damage on his uh, Q oh, on the... Nice. Uh, storm bow to delete the water elemental that had been bugging the Zeratul, not really allowing him to fall onto his victims, not really allowing him to engage and run away very well. Now, this is a good moment for Soa. This is definitely the yeah. moment they've been waiting for. They're using the distraction. They're trying to get that bottom temple in because as we know, the bottom keep was so brought uh, brought so low earlier. And that is a mistake that Sunny Lion should have not made. They should have realized the moment Soa retreats, they need to follow and they need to prevent them from getting any temple shots into the bottom. Well, that was the thing. Soa just guaranteed themselves that keep by fighting in that mid lane. The second that Odin was popped, they knew Tychus could not rotate as quickly yeah, as the rest of his team. So they knew no matter what, they were going to be fighting 4v5 or they're going to be fighting Tychus without an Odin. They're still, no matter what, going to get to the bottom uh, area first meaning that they're going to be able to get enough shots to take that keep. They guaranteed that with a beautiful rotation immediately reacting to an ability used by an opponent. It's just good game sense. Yeah, really good game sense, actually. You brought it, uh, you summarized it perfectly there. Just knowing that Tychus would be frozen in place for a couple of seconds, then he couldn't mount up because he was in Odin form. You can't manually cancel the Odin either, so he was trapped inside the suit quite literally. And that is why they were faster rotating. That's how they secured themselves to keep. However, still a one level disadvantage against Team Soa. So they're going to have to fight very shortly if they want to take things up on even terms without the level 20 arriving for their opponents. Sorry, cleaning up with the help of TY and Uncle G, the AoE damage they have, easily taking out the Bruiser Camp. Now their Bruiser Camp will begin to put on pressure into that top lane once again. And the longer this game goes on now, the bigger threat catapults will become. And next temple, going to be in that mid lane again. And you can see here by that very tiny little darker spot atop the mid keep of Sunny Lion, their keep is exposed and will take shots. All right, so things are about to get really heated here. Level 20 is online. Jaina actually trying to go for engage right here. Oh, no, no that was an empty marsh. Thin Air was the only guest invited to it. And now, of course, Soa is unleashed. They realize that one of the strongest tools for Sign Line is no longer available. As Faye pieces out, able to step out of the silence and not get caught in the mosh pit. Very clutch move here as we see Zeratul trying to do some damage. They're okay. committing. They have the Odin. They know they have to do something. So we're seeing Sunny Lion trying mm -hmm. to pick up the boss. They burn through it very quick, long, getting face melted away. And Tyrion, though, holy ground. Sanctification. VP on two members. Sunny Lion looking for round two on this. Boss is taken and oh. they get it once again. Malfurion completely isolated the damage output from TY. Trying to turn us round, but it's not enough. And full team wipe by Sunny Lion. That Bot lane boss, they're going to end the game. Yeah, I think that could be lights out for Soa. They put all their eggs in one basket. They were like, okay, we have to steal this. We have the Tyrell. But when one inch decides over victory or loss, you just can't go for a non-perfect Holy Ground. Unfortunately, that's what happened for Klonk. It was not on the point exactly. It was misaimed ever so slightly. And with a VP, this time well-placed by Wylight. Super well-placed, in fact. 
They were keeping everyone at bay. 25 seconds on the entirety of Soa. It is a tight, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, I'm really glad to see the Sunny Lions back on the hunt. They take a point of Soa. So important for them. This is the best Sunny Lion have looked for several days. Able to 